Hey guys, welcome back to Author Journey. My name is CJ Anaya, and today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about romance novels. I've had a lot of emails um, asking me how to structure romance, um, why some romances have not been working out well for people, um, and, and so I wanted to go over this a little bit, and it, it reminded me of a really fantastic um, workshop that I was able to attend with um, Sarah M. Eden. She's a romance writer, and she did this fabulous workshop that talked about why romances fail. And um, I did write a few notes down, <laughs> and they're not very extensive, but I did want to share a little bit of that with you, share a little bit of what I have learned uh, through the process of writing romances, um, and also share um, a few things from a, another author who talks about plot and structure quite a bit. And I'm going to give you some resources so that you, if you are a romance writer or if you have romantic elements within your story, uh, you will be able to to uh, look at those resources and learn a little bit more about the, the romance writing process because it's a plot that is far different from all of the other genres. And so there are specific things you need to master and do well um, for this romance novel to be a hit and not fall flat. So in this video, we're kind of, we're going to kind of go over like the don'ts of it just very quickly. And then in the next video, I want to talk about the three things that you absolutely have to have in a romance novel uh, in order for that novel to have a chance at succeeding. And it generally should if you incorporate these three things in there. So We'll go over uh, a little bit about the romance plot. Um, first thing is there are, there, there are several reasons why a romance novel will or won't succeed, and it always ties in with the development of the romance between the two love interests, which is, is the, the whole plot, really. If it's straight romance, that's the whole plot. Every character in a story is going to have a main goal and something they want or need, okay? Now, in a romance novel, this ends up being the relationship that ends in a happily ever after most of the time. Usually, uh, for, for romance readers, um, most romance readers are looking for, you know, uh, something that's going to be fulfilling, that they're going to get closure, um, there's going to be a happily ever after. Otherwise, why the heck are we reading this? However, we've got authors like Nicholas Sparks and you know, other authors who, who like to kind of like hit us at a really deep emotional level. And sometimes, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the hero will die or the, the female heroine will die, you know. And, and so <laughs> it just, it just depends. You need to know your readership very well um, because there are a lot of people who love romances that just tear your heart out, you know. And then there are other people who love romances that only end in a happily ever after. They need to know beforehand that that's what you do, that you do the happily ever after thing. Otherwise, they're, they're not going to want to read your books. So it, just, just uh, make sure that you, you stick to one or the other or have a good, happy combination of both so that your readers know what to expect and you know who you're targeting, okay? Um, but uh, basically, you know, the main character, whether it's the man or the woman, and most of the time it's the woman, um, wants the love interest and the love interest wants the main character. Okay, so that's what they want, that's what they need, that is the goal. But there are also underlying wants or needs, okay? So obviously the main goal of the book is for these two to come together in the end. Um, and whether, whether you're writing um, uh, heterosexual relationships or whether it's homosexual, like it doesn't, you transgender, it doesn't matter. The same rules apply because every, everybody wants something or needs something and that is the whole point and purpose. So you're not necessarily going to treat it differently um, when it comes to different sexual interests. What, what you're dealing with right now is that these people need to end up together in the end and that is the whole plot and purpose of it. Um, and of course, there's going to be something preventing them from getting what they want, which is being together. So the main focus is, is how they get there um, and also how they're growing, because a lot of times there is going to be um, a plot layer for each character. You know, they have something going on in the background, a goal that they're also trying to aspire to. And maybe part of the conflict of them getting together is that what they're trying to accomplish directly interferes with what this person that they could be falling in love with is doing. In their lives, you know, um, so and there are perfect examples of that with rom coms and, and other things like that. So pay attention to that. Um, obviously, romance subgenres will have plot layers if mystery or suspense is involved. Okay, so uh, if you're writing straight romance, the development of the relationship is going to be a lot more noticeable. 
um, if it's off. Um, either way, it's going to be noticeable. But uh, when you, there's a difference between just a straight romance novel and um, uh, like a mystery novel with elements of romance or romantic suspense. Okay, so so make sure you target in on what what it is you are writing, um, and and plan accordingly and focus on the different aspects of that plot that that you need to focus on in order to create a romantic suspense novel or a mystery novel that has elements of romance in it. Okay, so here's where authors run into problems. Um, and these are things that I've noticed. Uh, these were things that I learned from Sarah M. Eden and also from Gwen Hayes, who is an editor and a romance uh, novelist. Um, and she's helped a lot of other uh, romance authors on New York Times bestselling lists and things like that. So she knows her, her stuff too. And I'm going to put all those resources in there. Um, so Here's an issue that uh, came up from Sarah I Eden. Mean, she talked about love in a vacuum. She said nothing is happening other than the characters suddenly are falling in love for no discernible reason. So there's no growth there. The characters meet each other. It's insta-attraction, insta-lust, um, and then suddenly they're in love. Uh, it's purely physical, which is another issue. The romantic tension relies on nothing more than the physical aspects of the relationship, which prevents any development of emotional attachments to take place. Um, now, there's a difference between a straight romance novel and, and also erotica. Um, you have to know your audience because there are some erotica readers who are expecting that explicit content when forming the relationship or expecting that explicit content right away. And so erotica is a whole other different animal. You need to know who your audience is and write accordingly. When it's, when it's straight romance and it's not erotica and it's not heavily focused on the physical aspects of it, then, then this is what you need to pay attention to because people who enjoy reading romance novels enjoy the journey of these people falling in love and getting there and having them pulled apart and not necessarily coming together and you know waiting for that payoff at the end that is a very satisfying journey to go through with erotica the payoffs kind of happen immediately and that is what the audience who is reading that is wanting and that's what those writers are catering to so so you need to pay attention because a lot of what i'm talking about is probably not going to apply to erotica unless the erotica author knows that their audience wants to be taken on that journey but incorporates a lot of physical aspects within it. So I just wanted to touch on that because I don't want anybody to feel left out, but I also want to explain that there are differences in erotica and straight romance, okay? Okay, so little or no romantic tension. Uh, romantic tension involves wanting without fulfillment, okay? So the, the main character wants the love interest, and the love interest wants the main character, and I think we've all watched those movies or we've read those books where they're so close to, to that moment when they're going to kiss or when they're going to come to an understanding or when they're going to, you know, be able to relate to each other in a way and you can feel that energy and that chemistry between them. Oh, but then nothing gets fulfilled, you know, and they continue along and it's building and it's building and that, imp that anticipation of a simple kiss, it can cause enormous amounts of tension. You wouldn't believe the sexual tension that you can build in a romance novel without them even touching if you can do it right. And that is really quite, it's, it's, it's a great thing to do because it keeps your, your audience interested. They're, they keep reading because they're waiting for this payoff. They're waiting for this fulfillment. And it just builds and builds and builds that tension um, for uh, you know th this enormous amount of tension if the two love interests are always close to succumbing but they never quite get there, not until the payoff towards the end, okay? Um, and, and if that's not in the, the novel, then it's very difficult. P people just don't have a reason to keep reading. It's like, oh, we've already solved these problems. They're already together at the beginning. If they're already together at the beginning and you know getting along just fine and everything's hunky-dory, uh, there's no story. There's nothing to read. We want to read the journey of how they come together. What obstacles are they overcoming? What are they facing to get to that point where they can admit that they love each other and want to be together, okay? Uh, weak sources of conflict. Are the obstacles that prevent the love interest from coming together superficial? Um, are they unbelievable? Uh, so consider what each of your characters really want and, and what they need and put those wants and needs in opposition to one another. And I've talked about that in other in other tutorials and it really bo does boil down to this I've had so many people say you know what's the magic formula for writing a book and in any book the, the thing that is driving your book are wants needs goals conflict 
okay? What do they want? What's stopping them from getting it? This is the story, okay? This is life, man. So, so consider what each character wants, what they need. Put those wants and needs in opposition of one another, causing their, their relationship to seem doomed before it even starts. Like, there's no way we can, they can even be together. And I did this in The Healer with Ty and Hope. Um, I, I really followed this pattern to a T because... Um, you know, it, it's obvious that Hope and Ty want to be together, but according to this prophecy and according to everything that Ty has believed and Victor has believed thus far, Hope is soulmates with Victor, and yet she is in love with Ty and Ty's in love with her, and they're, you know, they're trying to figure out how that is even supposed to work. And so obviously the relationship is doomed from the beginning, and then we go into the next book and the next book, and we see how maybe these beliefs were not founded and, and what that really means. Um, and so right from book one, this attraction that she and Ty have to one another, this friendship they're developing, what they're really yearning for, it's doomed to fail because she's supposed to be marrying Victor. She's supposed to be his soulmate. And yet there's this tension and this conflict, you know? Um, sorry, I have just snooze, stop. There we go. Okay. Um, and, and so I really, I, I really put that in there and made that a little gut-wrenching for the Healer series. And it worked out really well because then people were like, well, what's going to happen if these two are supposed to be together, but clearly they're not supposed to be together? What's going on? Um, so make sure that your sources of conflict are not weak. They've got to, to be just gut-wrenching. You know, they've, it's, it's just the, the relationship is doomed. You know, a Romeo and Juliet scenario, only hopefully nobody is killing each other at the end of this. Um, Another issue is the reader doesn't care. Are your characters likable? Are they easy to relate to? Are they people we can admire? If they don't have any redeeming qualities or interesting backstories or quite possibly some deep, dark secret that prevents them from moving on and falling in love, uh, you might end up with characters who fail to inspire readers or pique their interest. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about character development, about creating heroic qualities in your characters, but also creating flaws. They're, they need to be multidimensional. Um, and if the reader doesn't care about your character and finds them shallow or uninspiring, if they find them unlikable and unrelatable, you are, it, it doesn't, it does not matter how great the, the relationship starts to develop, they already hate the character. And if they hate the love interest, if they hate the main character, they're not going to be rooting for them. And so you've already failed in the beginning there if you do not create a character who is multidimensional and interesting and lovable and likable and, you know who even has weaknesses that, that we can relate to, but maybe are also endearing some. So I just wanted to uh, discuss that a little bit. So these, these are the things that are going to cause problems. Um, if, and there are other things that I could get into, and oh man, I could, I could go into so much detail. I could, I could teach a whole course on, on the do's and don'ts of writing romance, but I just wanted to give you some, some things that would help you here. In the next video, we're going to go over three things that you really need to have, uh, which relates back to this quite a bit, but, but we'll go over it and talk about it, and hopefully that will help you. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you found it very helpful, please uh, feel free to like it. Feel free to share it with any of your romance author buddies uh, or anyone else who's interested in writing romance. Uh, please subscribe if you're new here, and um, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.